Hello, 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 ladies. Um, hi, guys. I am Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. And you probably saw, before you could even see my name down, yeah, over here, a couple people popped up. That is one of the alerts that I have turned on on my system. So when you say hello in the chat, your name pops up. I think that is super, super cool. Uh, we have Miss Maureen Pryor is in the chat, which I don't think hers popped up because she was in super, super early. She's always ready and waiting for me to go. Um, we have Heather from Sunflower Field Designs and we have Miss Melissa Klepser from Alaska. Um, how are you guys doing tonight? There we go. There's Miss Maureen's name. So now we can get crafty because Marina's in the house. Uh, I've got my tea. I've got my coffee. Hey, Don, how are you feeling, honey? Are you planning on going live? I'm thinking probably no, because I know that you had some um, medical things you had to take care of. And I've been thinking about you. But let us know. Um, while she's doing that, I'm going to see if I can do anything about the... Uh, yeah, a little bit too bright on the face here. Um, ba -bum -ba. I think I've just got the ISO done. Wrong. Well, I've got it on auto. That's part of it. It was set on automatic and that always does it a little bit wrong. Hey, Deb, how are you doing, honey? Yes, yeah, stream elements is in the house and that is one of the things that helps make things happen. Awesome. Well, I think the lighting on my face looks a little bit better. I still look friggin' old, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, so today I've got a couple of things I'm not sure what I want to play with. There's a couple of things. I, yeah, I've been busy working on some other stuff. Um, some of you guys probably got some emails from me today, maybe yesterday, because I'm trying to set up my weekly one step at a time. I think I told you guys before, if you're on my email list, you could set up how often you want to hear from me, get emails and notifications and newsletters, that kind of thing from me. And I'm trying to get that one set up. Uh, Maureen wants to know, how is it in, how is it dusty on the water? What? Okay. Oh, it's just flat out hot today. Absolutely. I mean, Todd was complaining. He was saying, you know, it's too hot outside to do anything. I mean, yesterday he managed to get the I think it was yesterday he managed to get the grass cut but I think part of that was because it had rained earlier and it has just been roasting he said the um the heat index was well above 100 yeah it's summer now <laughs> it's June it's summer now okay so Dawn says she sent me a discord message let me take a look at that real quick I'm also assuming since you're responding back to me and nobody's yelled at me you can't hear you that you can hear me tonight so that is awesome and Dawn says no problem understood so Dawn is announcement Dawn is going to be going live tonight so that is super awesome and once she has all that set up i will set up for us to do a redirect right over to her stream and don says i hear you um uh, melissa's out commercial fishing for salmon that is fun i i want some salmon so i'm changing my screens a little bit so i can see chat in two places so that'll be better so i can actually look at the camera um anyhow tonight um, i'm going through some of the stuff that i need to get some design team things done for and i'm partially because i've been busy working on the email thing and getting everything set up and trying to create a template and basically a lot of behind the scenes things and yeah so i kind of ran out of time again um and, but i've got a couple of things that i do want to work on and first one is all dies and i decided you know i don't really want to do that on the live tonight i will work on that tomorrow because it's a lot of die cutting i'm planning on doing at least three or four cards with that hello miss gloria welcome on in <laughs> um but i want you guys to tell me what you think because i've got a couple of ideas and one i sort of just plan with because yeah kind of had no choice and the stuff i was doing just turned out so pretty it's like um yeah i could probably need to do that on camera at some point but it's watercolor so it takes longer so yeah it's kind of one of those things so i'm going to go ahead and switch the camera down as long as everything works right so the first one is i got this this was um one of the things i got from spellbinders 
It's the new Simon Hurley Peel Apart Sketched Citrus. Thought that was super cool. So I decided, okay, I'm going to do that. I, I really haven't played with his ones with the pull aparts yet. I don't think. I may have one or two that I haven't gotten around to doing anything with, but this is a really, really pretty design, and you don't realize how pretty it is until you start working with it. So I made this cute little card just with one of them and the, and the corresponding, corresponding dies that go with it, and that's kind of cute. All it needs is a sentiment, and that'll be good. And then I decided, well, let me go ahead and... I know, that's what Todd said, Gloria. Anyway, um, what what I decided to do was go ahead and do, you know, watercoloring with the um, heat embossed background, actually on watercolor paper, because you guys know how bad I am. And this... I mean, I tried to make them look like lemons, but I also was only using the Simon Hurley inks that I have as watercolors. So that was something else I was kind of experimenting with. So these are citrus. That's the name of his stamp set is Sketched Citrus. So it's supposed to be oranges or lemons, right? Or if you did them green, they could be limes, I guess. But I think those turn out perfect. I, and to me, they look like, they do look like peaches. And I think that just turned out so pretty. It made me think of a lot of different things. Um, could be kind of a busy water, um, water, I'm sorry, a busy wallpaper. Made me think of a tropical kind of shirt. Gorgeous background. I absolutely love how this one turned out. And I was just messing around. I don't know how long it took me because I wasn't really paying attention. And I was just playing. So that's one of the options is to make something using this. Okay. Regardless, I am planning on using the Tim Holtz watercolor pencils. And just so that you guys know, I did go ahead and add links to these things. The, the, the stamp sets and the pencils are all listed in the description down below because I sometimes I forget to get around to getting those actually done. But that's one option. Another one, and these are just so super cute. Um, these are from the, this is the House Mouse Collection from Spellbinders. And we have got all these cute little mice. Yeah, I think they, they do look like peaches. I mean, I think it really doesn't matter what sentiment you add to it. And I've got enough you are sweet kind of sentiments um, that would work. Of course, this one, uh, this is just super cute with the little... The little guys with their their flowers are their umbrellas and it's raining and then there's two other ones i've got t for two with the cute little meese um meeses having a cup of tea and then this one down here um very good so i think all of those are super cute but i'm not sure which one to play with so you guys need to tell me what you think because I'm going to be playing with them I, at some point in the next few days it's either going to be um either going to be tonight or within the next few days because I need to get some videos up. My videos aren't due, you know, I got between now and like mid-month to get those done. And of course, I do need to start working on the new things for July. Uh, Maureen says, hi, Todd. Melissa says, hi, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to know also while y'all are thinking about what you'd like me to, I should probably put a poll up and let you guys tell me if you want me to do one of the mice. If we do one of the mice, I'm I'm kind of torn. I kind of want to do this one just because of the rain. I think that's super cute. But these are darling too. I think they're just adorable. And that's why I just had to say yes when Spellbinder said, do you want to play? Uh, but I'd love to know how many of you guys got any of the emails from me. Did they come through okay? I know what it looks like when I receive them because I have them sent to myself, but I never know for sure what it looks like when you guys get them. So I'd love to know if you guys got those. Heather loves the one with the rain. Deb loves the one with the rain. So that may be what we do. Don got the, Don and Melissa both got the emails. Fantastic. I'm also wanting to, in the next few months, Okay, I've got too many things that I want to take to the next level, if that makes any kind of sense. Uh, Melissa says rain. Um, so I'm working on multiple things. I've got classes lined up for, I've actually got them scheduled for the, the rest of the year, the once a month craft alongs. And I've already decided on the theme for the next three. And they are available on the website for, for purchase now. 
So you can register early. So that's one of the things I've been working on, plus summits and those kind of things. So I'm trying to work on all the things. Um, one of the things I do want to kind of flesh out more, well, two actually, there's the subscription plan on my website. I want to I want to flesh that one up but out a bit more. And I also want to, <laughs> I can bring new drops keep falling on my head. Awesome. I also want to um flesh out the memberships here on the channel we don't have a whole lot of perks we also don't have a whole lot of folks that are currently registered as members on my channel which is one reason why i haven't really pushed forward as much as i need to but i also know that if all you're getting is hello miss linda welcome welcome if all you're getting is your name in a special color and a cute little envelope beside your name in the chat that that basically calls you out to say yes you are a member on my channel i don't know that that's actually enough so i'd love to get some more of you guys' ideas i've also got the um, special emotes that are in the chat um, that are under the chat of course i added those before YouTube added a bunch of other ones on top of it, so it's kind of hard to get to them now. Um, but anyway, okay, so Heather got at least one of the emails. Okay, great, because I did send out two. One was introducing the next class, which is going to be on, it's going to be Christmas cards. <laughs> Love that, Melissa. That is too cute. But one of them is announcing the classes, and then the other one is one saying the things that we did last week, the things that I'm planning for this week. Oh, welcome, welcome. Um, I think I recognize your name, LFG Neely. I mean, the last name anyway. I, are you on my email list? Or you're just popping in to say hi either way is great so i think it's decided that we're gonna play with this one right so this one is this cute little mice and i'm gonna start off in this i actually printed this out off of the website so i can have it in my little envelope so i know exactly what it's supposed to look like because i haven't 100 percent decided how i'm going to store it because the acetate that i got i can't say it's what you get i get like samples so they don't come in the same kind of packaging that you get. The acetate I got it on is kind of thin. So I'm putting it on a laminated, this was actually a laminated divider that I've had in my stash for I don't know how long. Okay, Heather says she did get the latest buzz. Awesome. So that's what I'm kind of going to title it for now until I change my mind again. Anyway. Oh, awesome. If you're not on my email list, um, you can join that one. Uh, and let me see if I, I think I have a link down below. There's also a section down in the description under part that says let's be friends that should have uh, my link bio. OK, so it should be debbiejscraftingcorner.com backslash link bio is how to get to all of my links. And I'm trying to keep that updated. Again, it's another one of those things that's behind the, th see, the behind the scenes that I'm trying to do a better job of getting that stuff done for you guys. But you guys know me, Squirrel. I get so wrapped up in creating um, creating cards and things and making the videos and doing all that stuff that sometimes the behind the scenes stuff doesn't get done. I mean, I just finished doing six months of accounting stuff <laughs> in like two days. I didn't really spend a whole lot, so because I don't. Um, so it wasn't that terribly bad, but still, it took two days for me to get all of that done. And I used to be a bookkeeper. If Cordelia's in the house, she knows what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm going to use my Misty. And when you're using a cling stamp and you're using your Misty, you do want to take your foam pad out of there. I am planning on still using my DIY sticky grid that's not really as sticky as I like because I and I do need to make another one. The pack that I got these in was like real cheap. It's like under $15, I think, and had three of them, three big ones. And this is like, um, Let's see, I think it's like a 12 by 12 is what it came with. And this one is, it probably means that I could get two of them out. But of course, I do need to cut off all of the edges and such too. This is actually made to um, kind of take the place of your Cricut or Silhouette mat. Scan and cut, it doesn't quite work that way because they've got their special registration marks. Anyhow, I'm going to do that. And I did go ahead and cut down some watercolor paper. So I've got some of that that'll fit in my... Hello, Miss Brenda. Welcome, welcome. And I think I'm going to do this right about there. I haven't 100%. Well, let me. I don't know if I'm going to. 
I'm gonna leave enough space at the bottom so that I can also add the sentiment because I haven't decided if I'm going to cut these out because that's gonna be kind of a pain because it's all gonna be fussy cutting because there is no die for this or if I'm going to just trim it down and put it on the front of a card so let's just start with this I am leaving enough space at the bottom so I'll be able to add the sentiment if I choose to and getting out my wild clear embossing powder and did I not put it away no I did not put it away it's on my desk yeah I told you I've been playing <laughs> I've been doing getting there's been times that I've had to take a break and unplug my brain from all the back end stuff and I needed to get some crafting done so I did oh gosh I made nine cards in a day and you guys only got to see the video for the first one that's that video that came out yesterday not 100 sure when that one came out but the one that was this one that was one of the cards and then i made another eight after finishing that up and that's in another video that i still have to edit that i am planning on having up for you guys on thursday yes today's tuesday thursday and my days are kind of running together well it was really easy to do those and i am going to be sharing sharing all of that it's kind of hot foil on a fun background and just gorgeous and i think this is a little bit crooked i just noticed this the the foam piece on the front of my stamp for the sentiment i'm gonna have to be careful with that because the bottom does not line up i don't know if you guys can see that so I think I'm going to have to take my um, undo and undo and then reline it up. But I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to do this part first. That's only if I want to just stamp directly onto the card. If I want to just stamp it out and cut it out and add the sentiment that way, we're perfectly fine. Okay, so here we go. I'm just using some Versifying Claire. This is Nocturne. And this, the, these designs, this I, I, I've seen these cute little mice before, and I don't remember what company it was. I just know that this is Mouse House, no, House Mouse. House Mouse Collection, I think, is what they're called right now. So it may be that the company changed or something like that. Not 100% sure, but these, I think, are just super, super cute okay okay and because it is watercolor you can see it doesn't really look that good on there yet so i definitely am glad i'm using my misty for this because that way i can put another layer of ink down and i don't really stamp much on watercolor paper i have this bad habit of just using regular paper but then you wind up with the pilling of your you sometimes wind up with pilling when it comes to the using too much water on there or you just have to be very careful to use very little okay i also don't remember if i'm using this is the smooth side or the not so smooth side i thought i was using the smooth side nope and i don't know that i like that graininess on this i don't know if you guys could see it but I'm seeing a lot of graininess on this, and that's because of the watercolor paper that I'm using. This is some Strathmore, and it's just the texture from that watercolor. Let me try one more and see if it works better. If it doesn't work like I want it to, I may just switch back to regular cardstock, just going with a heavy weight. So I don't usually need to stamp twice with this ink. This ink is usually pretty good first time around. Turn it over. I think this is what she's talking about. But I can't really do it. It's not where the ink's not going down on there. It's just that there's so much texture on the paper that it's just not wanting to work right. 
Okay, I'm going to set that one to the side. And just feeling it, this side does look like it is the textured one, but even the smooth side doesn't really look like as smooth as I'd want it. So this one's textured. I'm going to try it again on another piece. And after that one's dry, I could still use that one on the other side. I do know that it's Strathmore. The thing is, I've only got a couple of, I don't really have a lot of watercolor paper because I don't do a lot of watercoloring. And it's been sitting around <laughs> for I think I bought it in Austin, to be honest. Because when we went to went for Thanksgiving in Austin, I didn't take a whole lot of stuff with me. And watercolor is something that it doesn't take a lot of space. So this side is just double checking. Yeah, this is the smooth side. So wish me luck. I have a habit, um, and you guys probably know this, until I know that I can do something, I don't really spend a whole lot of money on it. Okay, this does look better. It's still a little bit grainy, but it's not as bad. It does need another layer of ink. Oh my God, am I gonna use up all the ink from one pad on one thing? Probably not, but I, and I don't know that I've got a re-inker, but I can get one, right? So it's already six o'clock and I haven't even gotten the image done yet. <laughs> Gloria, when you said to turn it over, it's like I can't really turn over the paper because it already had ink on it. And the reason I turned over the Misty is because I know that some folks put the stamp down in the bottom side and put the attach the paper to the cover and then they turn it over to give it more pressure. So I know that some folks do that. I also have not stamped this on anything else, so maybe it's the stamp. Okay, I'm going to say that this is going to have to be good enough, and then of course I am going to be using these on regular paper too at some point. Let's go ahead and emboss this. And the reason for the embossing is to make it easier for me to do my watercoloring and to make it all look prettier. I love, I love having those dark lines. Okay. And it looks like I need a little bit more right there. Yeah, it could be just the fur. But I thought the lines were a little bit clearer on the um, on the flowers too. We'll see. Hello, Miss Crystal. Welcome, welcome. And I just realized I do not have this turned on, which is why we didn't see Crystal's name up on the screen. I am so sorry. I thought that that was what happened with a couple of other people, but I wasn't sure. I just didn't have it turned on on the screen. I am so sorry. And I know why. It's because when I was recording, I don't want Debbie J's Crafting Corner showing up at the bottom because I've got a different way to add that if I want to when I'm doing the editing. Anywho. So you guys are going to have to tell me what you think. I think it's where it's supposed to look like that. That's kind of cool. Yep, it is the texture. It's got a lot more texture than what I usually have on my stamps. So that is really, really cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is so cool. That is going to be pretty. Okay. Which also means you don't have to use black ink. I just realized I got a bunch of embossing powder off my desk and that's going to irritate me. So I'm going to have to clean that up when I get done here. I've also been embossing just enough to irritate me. And um, 
which means I got my little vacuum out that I haven't actually, I've had it tucked behind one of my monitors for more than six months because I haven't needed to use it as much on my desk. Okay, Versified looks like it does add a lot of ink on there, just stain it a little bit. Let me get some stamp cleaner. I'm actually going to use my archival. Hello, Miss Linda. Can you guess which troublemaker Miss Linda is? <laughs> You do know that that's because you guys call each other TM123, whatever, right? Okay. Oh, this archival cleaner is working pretty good, and it's actually got lots and lots of suds, which is kind of interesting. Okay. Yeah, I just got the archival ink cleaner, which I should have gotten a long time ago, but I don't use a lot of archival ink. But I got that because of the better press, which I do have some things on the way. So we will be playing with that again soon. That's going to be awesome. Plus, they've got some new stuff for Christmas. And I know that they're sending me some of it. So that is awesome, too. Okay, that's not perfect. I will clean it better later. But let's go ahead and get this out of the way. And excuse the noise, if I can, there it is. Excuse the noise while I clean up some of this embossing powder. <laughs> oh, Linda loves the better press, yep. You have to be careful with that. I mean, it is another tool. It is another thing to buy. You don't have to get it unless you want it. And it's just another way to make really cool things. And I'm thinking even watercolor paper, because it is thicker, is going to make is going to cause some of the really nice results. The best results on that one, of course, is going to be if you're using um, if you're using my brain just stopped again. What the heck is wrong with me? If you're using their specialty paper and their specialty inks, those are going to be the best. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't use what you got, right? We always do that. We always find different ways to get a similar look for whatever we're wanting to try to do in a different way. Okay, so I think I'm going to start off with some browns. This one is Vintage Photo. Hey, T. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the party. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit of water all over my little mouse. And then I'm going to grab up some of it off of the pencil and just add that down. And since I put some of the water, some of the water down first, um, it should help it to stay a little bit lighter instead of it being too dark. Okay. And I can already tell I got some over the little um, stem of the flower. That's okay. I'm just going to go back over it anyway. And I'm just making all of my little Mises brown and they're going to be a kind of a darkish brown because of all of that black but their hands and their faces are going to be nice and light let's take a little bit more off of that one's face yeah i'm lifting some of the some of the watercolor off of the first one that was a little bit dark and adding it to one of my other ones I think these are going to be even easier to color than I thought. You know how sometimes you get an image and you're excited about it, you think this is going to be really cool, but how much work is it going to be? How long is it going to take me to get that done? And here we got little tails. Okay. Well, wow, my mice are pretty much done. I 
Okay, I am going to use some pink, though, for inside the ears. I think I want to actually add a little of this brown into the inside of the ear, and then I'm going to add some pink over it. So, let's see, this one I think is Kitsch Flamingo. I also don't want to mix them together too much, so... So, Dave is ornery. Okay, so Maureen was saying, how is Dave today? And she says, according to my son, ornery. That was my dad. My dad was ornery. Okay, so adding a little bit of pink in there. I don't know if it's going to actually make that much of a difference, but that would be kind of cool if it did. I may have to use a darker pink. Let me grab out some picked raspberry. Because this one seems to have a little bit more pigment. There we go. That looks a little better. And I can still see the little bit of pink on this guy's ear. That looks cute. Okay. And then for the flowers, they could be daisies. They could be white. But I think I'm going to make them yellow so that we can see them better, right? Or I could just do the green grass and then the background and let it go with that. Let's see, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add some of the green down here. I'm first adding some water. Yes, I am using a water brush, but these don't tend to they have this bad habit of not actually giving me any of the water down like I want. I don't really know why. I can't seem to get them to... Um, I probably have them clogged. I probably get need to get new ones. These are only like, I don't know, five years old. I'm also seeing where the other foot, where the mice have a second foot that I can actually see down here now. It's like there's so much, there's so much ink down there and so many different lines and everything. It's hard to tell where one part ends and another part begins. So let me do that next. I'm going to go ahead and put down a little bit more of the brown and that's going to be right where the feet are, actually. So there's a foot there, and there is a foot here, I think. And just add the color in a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to also come in and add some green over where I know the stem is. It's a little difficult to actually put this through the, um, through all of that embossing. But I think it's easier than just trying to go straight with the um, watercolor. It seems to be working. Okay, a little bit more green here. I do like the control you have from when you're able to watercolor with a pencil. Because it's easier to put it down exactly where you want it with a pencil, right? I am getting a little bit outside the lines, but not too much. Okay. So for the background, I need to do, I think, some blue and I think I want, I'm gonna go with prize ribbon. We're gonna go with a dark, dark blue. Oh, double bypass. Well, I, I'm, you're in my prayers, oh my goodness. My dad had a double bypass, and when I say he was ornery, he was ornery, okay? He also didn't tell me anything. I didn't have any idea there was anything going on. Um, I found out that he was having double bypass surgery after he was done. This was back in 94, and that was because my stepmother she contacted me. She called me and let me know that my dad had had double bypass surgery that day. 
And at the time, they also said that, yeah, when they when they looked at his heart, they said that they were, you know, that they didn't, when they looked at his heart and his lungs, I'm trying to remember how they said it. It was something about that it wasn't as bad as something else. But the thing is, they didn't tell me there was actually something wrong with his lungs. My dad had emphysema. They knew it in 94. And I didn't find out until... 04 or 05, I think it was. Yeah, my, my dad. Mm. And he passed away in, I don't even remember what year it was, but it was after me and Todd got married. So he did get, get to come to my wedding, which is nice. And, um, yeah, but he passed away from emphysema mostly because he would not give up cigarettes. So just to say, if you guys smoke, need to stop. I mean, my dad had the opportunity to also get a lung transplant and wouldn't stop smoking long enough to get on the list. I mean... What he wound up saying is that if he if he were to die, at least he died doing something that he loved. And yeah, I get it, but it's like, come on. He he was only smoking since he was about like what I think, sixteen, seventeen years old. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. I do need more water down though. And I don't want to put the water directly on. I mean, it would be faster, but I don't want to put the water directly onto my card. Let's see if I've got a bigger brush. Of course, I did not bring a. I did not bring a thing of water in here to do this. There we go. That was a little bit quicker. Awesome. You're going to talk about that in August. Yeah, this color is pretty for a sky. And I kind of am liking the whole watercolory loose look, I guess, that I'm getting putting this down. And again, using the, yeah, now this is actually giving me a lot of pigment now. It's giving me a lot more, which means I can make the my sky as stormy as I want. This is really, really cool. I am very glad that Tim Holtz came out with these watercolor pencils. Probably I just never have used some really good ones. I think I've used Hobby Lobby brand and Michael's brand and never could get them to work quite right. I probably also just didn't have the patience <laughs> to keep going when I should have kept going. But this looks really nice. Okay, now I need to get this center area, fill it in, and then you guys can tell me, should I stick with just the white flowers or should I add some color? I'm thinking if I add any color to them, I'm going to add some yellow. But I'd love to know what you guys think. And I think I want it to make it a little darker, too. Shouldn't the sky be gray? Well, it does turn darker and darker and darker. So I'm thinking blues and grays and purples would be all fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> 
And I think I've also seen folks that have done this card in a lighter blue in the background too, but I want it to be a bit darker. But yeah, I could actually, I could definitely add some black to this and darken it up even more. But also, if the if it's too dark out, if it's too stormy, you can't really see. Just in, okay. For instance, here in Florida, if the sky is too dark, you're not going to be able to see what's going on in the background. Another thing here, uh, but you can be in the front yard and have it sunny and have it raining in the backyard. That happens a lot <laughs> more often than you'd like than you would um, you would actually believe. Thank you so much, Jean. Jean says it looks good. I'm going to take her. I'm going to take her word for it. Hello, Erlene. And by the way, hello, Miss um, Miss Jean. Welcome, welcome. Speaking of, hey, stop it. Speaking of welcome, welcome. I have not added sounds to that yet. Okay. So what color should I go with for the um, for the flowers? Oh, I am using Tim Holtz watercolor pencils. So for the bat for the sky and background, I'm using prize ribbon. Gloria says our skies are smoke filled today. Oh my goodness, that happens here every time they decide to do a control burn, which is a good idea because we've got so many forests and stuff. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Okay, great. So I've got, this one is mustard seed. And then this one is, just looking to see which ones, fossilized amber. And you guys are somewhat familiar, I know, because everybody loves Tim Holt stuff, that you know what those colors are. Okay, those are the two yellows that are in the watercolor pencil sets. Hi, Linda. When do you start your stuff for Pink and Maine? Maureen says, yeah, a lot here too. Florida is crazy. Yes, I know. I love Florida. I do love these pencils so far. I've been using them at, so at this point. I've been only using them for um, watercolor. Oh, God. Everglades on fire. Yeah. I've only been using them as watercolors, and I think you guys have basically seen most of that that I've done, but I'm thinking that they are looking pretty cute. I love the way that they are um, doing. Um, I think I, well, depends on where I cut this. I need to do, I think, a little bit more blue up at the top. Where did I put that one? Is this one prize ribbon? Come on out of there. Yep, this one's prize ribbon. I think I need a little bit more up at the top. And yeah, I know I'm spraying directly on the paper and I'm not real comfortable with that. I know a lot of you guys do a lot of watercoloring and that sort of thing. I I have this bad habit of if I don't if I'm not in complete control of stuff, it has a harder I have a harder time doing it. Um T, are you saying yeah, you're trying to go to sleep on me? Come on. You need to watch me play playing Fortnite. You will not go to sleep when I'm playing Fortnite. I am glad that you feel I have a soothing voice. <laughs> okay, this time I am putting, it looks like I am putting down enough of it that it's gonna make it a little darker. And I do have extra water up here, so I should be able to, yeah, let's add some water direct. Ooh, that looks cool. So I'm going to let it do a little bit of mixing on its own. I told you, I am not, I don't, I am, I am usually a control freak on a lot of this. And right now I'm trying my best not to be just so that I can get some cool results with you guys. You guys have seen me do a lot of my um, experimentation. 
Oh, Jennifer McGuire puts you to sleep? No, I love her stuff. My problem with a lot of these guys is I have shiny object syndrome. Every time I, yeah, I'll be watching a video and the next thing, if they say something, I have to go ahead and try it right then. So I've got, I think that's one reason why I'm so behind on so many things that I need to do um, when it comes to watching some of my videos and stuff. There's a lot of folks stuff that I want to watch that I need to watch that I haven't gotten around to specifically because... I need to stop and do it. Um, I'll be working, the, I started watching a video about affiliate, about using affiliates and stuff. And it's like, you can do that. So I had to go ahead and see how it worked. I, and this is like two minutes into a summit video that was out this weekend that I of course had to get the all access pass because I want to know all the things and I don't have time to watch all of the videos and all of the things. I mean, it's like 11 sessions a day. It was a ton of stuff this weekend. So yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna use mustard seed and I am gonna go ahead this time and co color directly on there and partially because I've got so much blue right around it and this stuff has not had a chance to dry at all. So I'm gonna be a little bit careful. I know, it did have time to dry and then I added more water. Okay. This little guy is so cute. It's like, I don't care about the rain. I'm going to just drink. I'm going to take me a drink of water from the rain. So he's got his little mouth hanging open. Okay, so let's see how this does. I'll probably need to add some more yellow in. Oh, but that is that is nice. Actually, I'm thinking this does look kind of like the, you know, there are yellow daisies and these are like a soft yellow, but I might want a more vibrant. I haven't decided yet. Let me get a little bit more pigment. And I love the technique of taking it right off of the pencil because you know what? That's going to make these things last forever. Uh, there was a, um, Linda, that, there was a summit. This one was the crafty biz i'm gonna have to look because i forgot what it was called um craft business summit was put on by we can make that and she had there was basically like 11 sessions and it's for people that are wanting to take their their crafty business whether it's your youtube channel or or whatever but wanting to take it to the next level um, I think I, I heard about it. I know I got an email from several different people and I have no idea whose affiliate link I actually used because I think I may have signed up at least twice for it because I couldn't find the links. But, um, but yeah, um, stamp me from, stamp me, ha. Huh. Stamp me some love. So Brandy Mahon was one of them, one of the speakers in there. Aaron Reed was one of the speakers in there. And I have basically only had time to watch the party the the video that they do on youtube at the beginning I, I did watch all the way through one of those and part of a couple of others mostly i watched the parts that are on youtube if you want to see some about what it was going what was going on i don't know that it's it might still be available if you want to um want to get the free ticket but again i think that i think it's over as of tomorrow i think tomorrow's the last day unless you get the all access pass thing but um it's going to be on we can make that youtube channel and if you guys are an interested in stuff i can definitely i'll pop that into the discord or over on my youtube channel um, over on my facebook group or something or i can put it into the chat here if you guys are interested just let me know because I know most of you guys are just are crafters. You're not necessarily doing a YouTube channel or a business of any sort or anything like that. You just want to play. You don't mind smokers. I'd love a card. Um, How come some of us have the heart sidebar thing and some of us don't? I haven't looked at, I think you have it on, I know I have it on 
my YouTube channel, I mean on PC, I think you should have it on your computer too, but I'm not 100% sure. And the only time I can see it, that's what's weird, I can't see it in the, I've got Restream Dreams chat up on one machine and as I look at other things, it's in the other and I haven't really looked at this. Oh, now I see all the hearts. Okay, well one reason I don't have that one up is because the, the chat is right behind my camera <laughs> and I can't read it. Okay, this still needs to dry some, but I think that looks pretty cute. What do you guys think? I also changed my camera a little bit. I've got it down about like four inches. Yeah, I think I've got it down like about four inches lower. So now I can get, you can see better. It looks better from the, um, I can do, I can do almost do a zoom. I did not see your thousand hearts, but I love you, Dawn. Okay. So usually when you do watercoloring, you're gonna wanna tape it down, but you know, I didn't do it because I'm lazy. I also like to move things around, and if I had um, taped it down, I would have had to tape it down to like a cutting board or something, which can mess up the lighting. That's something that I have now discovered since I decided to switch back to my tonic. You're not, it's, everything's not as washed out. So it's like everything looks better. I thought everything looked better on the white background, but right now, it looks like everything looks better on the black. So you guys are gonna have to tell me what you think. If you go back to some of my older videos and see the white background, that's from my white glass board. And let me know, do you like it better with the black background or the white background? <laughs> black always. And Crystal says, love your spring rain house mouse card. Yeah, I think this is just adorable. Okay, so now I need to trim it down, and I still had some stuff out on my desk that I hadn't decided to put away yet, and I think I'm going to actually use, I never do this, I'm going to use a die, because I know I didn't put it away, because I intentionally did not put that one away when I put the other stuff away, because I thought I might use it. Okay, so this is the fluted frames, the rectangle flute. I don't even have this labeled. I am so bad. So this one makes it an A2 size card. But if I decide to put a fluted frame around it, I can use this one to cut out the image. Yeah, I think that's going to be perfect. I mean, yeah, I do wind up wasting some of it, but that's okay. I, it, it's it's fine. That I can always use that little bit for something else if I want to. And then I can cut a fluted frame. This part out of another color cardstock. And what do I want to use? Let me get to some of my cardstocks that I've got big enough pieces over here. Could put it on dark blue. That might be too much blue. I don't have a lot of full sheets of colored cardstock out here, but actually, if I go with the blue, I'll go with that because that's smaller. And don't want to do red. That's silver, don't really want to do silver could do that yep I don't really have a whole lot out here I do have craft I could go with craft but I don't know what do you guys think do you think brown um different shade of blue so it would work yeah new sky for another card absolutely so you guys think that that would look good on the dark blue. Because I'm think I'm and I think I'm yeah. Uh, my brain is not working, but yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. So and in order to do that, this is gonna be full A2 size and then the fluted frame. And this is gonna give you give it that texture. 
It's been a while since I've used the fluted frames because I don't take the time to do the extra. It's like, yeah, I'm so busy with working on the focal point and the, the, the main part of the card that I don't get around to doing any of these little, little extra things that make them super nice too. Okay. I'm trying to start doing some of the other stuff again. I mean, some of them are just, there's some things are just so, I don't know. They're quick and easy to do and they take your card to the next level, but we don't think about doing them because we spent so much time doing the other parts of it, right? Okay, just taping my fluted part to the frame. And grabbing out my die cutting machine. Okay. Uh, I think I might know one of T's things. T, do I know one of your things? And I'm going to just. Okay, I want it to go with the whole thing. I'm gonna trim. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to waste any of the card. Here's the thing. Sometimes going this way isn't gonna work, but it'll be it'll give me a straight line. We normally try to do everything at a little bit of an angle. I thought so. Oh, by the way, guys, because my brain just works this way, um, I did send in the email that I sent out, letting you guys know what was coming up. Um, I have tonight's live on there, but I've also put on there tomorrow night's live. So yes, I'm going live again tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is um, not too shabby. So we're going to be working with the donuts. And I'll be live here and on the not too shabby Facebook group. Yep, I knew it wasn't going to cut. But that is okay. It did add the texture. And then I can just trim the rest with my scissors or my paper trimmer. Come on, let go. And it shows me right the line where I need to go for, to cut it with my paper trimmer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, while I have this out, though, let me get the smaller die. And that is this one. And we're going to go ahead and cut this guy down. It's mostly dry. That just means I need to be very careful removing the the tape. I know what you mean, Deb. Deb says that she has so many unfinished cards. That happens to me too. I try to help. I have a very bad habit of um if I don't finish the card right then. I may not ever get around to it. I still have my stack of letterpress things that we did last week that I still need to put together and do cards. And if I don't already, if you were in the chat that night and I don't already have your address, make sure that you're on my, my mailing list. Okay, so here we go. So that turned out great. And I can still use that little bit of extra there. Actually, that might not be too bad going on the inside of a card, too. And when I said I need to be careful with taking the tape off, it's because if your watercolor color paper isn't completely um, dry, if it's not really, if it's not dry, if the water is still in there, you may wind up to get a little bit of lifting and stuff. It doesn't always work well. Ask me how I know that. I know that because I've screwed up enough times. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and trim this down right at that edge. I can't do it on this side so I can see the line better. And 
this is gonna there we go looks like it is just a touch above now touch bigger than the size i need and i can see the imprints of the die so trimming just a touch off to try to make sure it's going to actually fit on an a2 size card base of course my card bases are not always exactly right I've noticed that every time when I'm making a card base, the paper is usually just a smidge larger than what we were thinking. <laughs> Dang, I'm going to bring all my house mail stamps up now. <laughs> They're back. Oh my goodness. That is too cute. I do love the way that that is turning out. I do need to put it under something though, because you can see that paper is still a little bit warped and it's not completely dry yet. So I think I'm just gonna put it under, under all my pencils and we can get our card base out. And I'm gonna go with, I think I'm gonna go with a white card base. Except these are card panels, not bases. Do I have card bases over here? I should. Here's one that's not folded yet. That's what I was saying. I mean, I've used one before. I've got another one around here somewhere, or maybe I got rid of it, I don't know, a long time ago. I don't know. I don't think I did, but I don't remember where it is. But yeah, but yeah, they just came back out. And I don't know for sure what the company, I thought it was Stampendous that did it. Oh, I bet heating this would help me. I don't know if you guys can see it. You can see the rubber outside of that. That's because it's not lined up right. Which means if I try to put this down to um, actually line up correctly, you know, on my card, it would be crooked. So I'm going to see if I can pull it apart enough. Oh, and the heat did help. Okay, so it's straight on most of it. So now I just need to... There we go. Awesome. Now I'll be able to use that and know exactly where I'm putting it down. So this is going to be what the stamp looks like. Perfect. Okay. Jean, I have quite a few. I can stamp you some. Ooh. That is super sweet. Okay. So four and a quarter by five and a half for the card base. So T, you said that uh, my voice is soothing. Does that mean that my voice is ASMR? Don't know. Some days are longer than others. Wow. Okay, it's probably still not quite flat, but I'm gonna go with it. Mostly dry. And I'm going to try adhering everything down with liquid glue. Okay, and I'm debating whether or not, okay. Debating whether or not I need to do foam. I'm thinking it'll be fine without it. It'll be a flat card. I don't make a lot of flat cards. I'm pushing it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, I will cut my lawn while you work. <laughs> okay, I do still need to do the sentiment. And I think I'm going to do, do this on that same dark blue card stock. Except I don't remember where I put the extra. I had it a second ago. And Elizabeth's not in the chat to have stolen it. So I don't know where it went, you know? Don't cut your grass. <laughs> not under there. Okay. 
I do love the way that card is turning out, though. I really don't know what happened to that card. Maybe I've got a scrap the same color. That would be nice. I have a scrap, but that is a little bit too small, I think. It might fit. Might. We'll see. And this one I am going to do heat embossing on as well. I'm going to do it with white. Dawn says that she didn't steal it. Yeah, we really believe her, don't we? Okay, so I've got it lined up right in the bottom. Okay, let's grab out. Okay, it's not up there. Okay. I've got some Hero Arts White. And I'm also going to use white embossing powder. And I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool. I have two of them. I should use them. And I'm, st I'm thinking, really thinking seriously about getting the Rabbit Hole Designs one. That is so cool. Okay, put it kind of in the middle and ink it up with some white. Depends on my aim. My aim or Dawn's aim? Or are we talking about somebody else? Okay, Erlene is saying Penny Black, Northwood Stamp, and Stampendous are also makers of the stamp. That's what I was thinking. I'm pretty sure that what I have um, in my stash somewhere are from Stampendous. Speaking of, that is another thing I need to get done that's on my list of things to do that I keep putting off. And that is updating my um, Color My Life with a, at least with it with all of my spellbinder stuff i need to get that done first and then i can move on to getting rid of all the stuff that i'm not going to use right I, mean, I have a lot of stamps and dies that i have not used in at least two years that i'm almost positive i am probably never going to use some are in good shape some are not so much so that means that they're going to be so the good ones will probably be de-stashed to you guys. I'm probably, I'm thinking I'm probably going to be doing like goodie bags for cost of shipping plus a little extra or something like that. Haven't 100% decided yet. Oh, I need to put this, I need to put the embossing powder on. What's wrong with me? And this is supposed to be... Um, detail embossing powder from from recollection but it's also old so I don't have a of course I made a mess looks like it covered pretty well and looks like it didn't go out of the lines too bad so that should be good let's go ahead and heat this up and I don't want to burn my fingers Yes, squirrel. <laughs> so you guys want all the things, right? I know I have been talking about doing that for probably the last, at least the last six months because it was part of my 2023 plan. It hasn't happened yet because I got too much stuff I got to get done. And you, you guys know reorganizing takes a lot of time. So far I have bought new bins, got all of my spellbinder stuff put into the new bins and got pretty much all of it into new sleeves and so it all looks pretty. I see him too. Um, oh, you see the scroll too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got lost there for a second. Okay. So this is actually almost done and it's not seven o'clock yet. How many times have I had to finish the card off screen after the fact, guys? 
get this out of the way. Okay, so now I'm going to glue this one down. And I'm not going to go into where the, the little ridges and such are because I don't really want them to show through. Yeah, I know. I am so real. I'm so bad about that. The thing is, I also started thinking, you know what? If I died, what's going to happen with all my stuff? Seriously, all my crafty stuff is going to go to Goodwill. Seriously, if I die tomorrow, that's what my husband will do with my stuff. I don't have anybody to inherit it that would want it. <laughs> Oh, that looks lovely. I am going to need to trim the card down a little bit on this side, but that's because the card is never exactly perfect. And now we've got this. And I think the strip is actually pretty good. Yes, that would be very sad, which means that I need to de-stash the stuff that I'm not going to use. <laughs> Jean says, put me in your will. <laughs> it's just one of those things that I have, I really have to learn how to do. It's like, if I'm not going to use it, I need to de-stash it. I was wondering, Jim, if you were going to be coming out. I haven't seen you in my chat in a few weeks. And welcome on in, Jim, and welcome on in, um, my brain just stopped, Yvette. I have a heart already given specific instructions on what to do with my crafty stuff when I die. Well, I asked my husband what's going to happen with it, and he told me. So, we have some new folks in here that haven't been in in a bit, so, welcome. <laughs> okay, so, I'm going to just trim this one down again, and my little trick for using this specific paper trimmer, and I think most guillotine trimmers are going to be like this, you've got your finger guard, and if I lined up the edge, the plastic edge, right here, with my sentiment, with the words, if I lined it up all the way down, and I do need to pull it this way because there's a little bit of movement there. But if I do that and I trim it, it basically makes them pretty much perfect. So where do we want to put that? Do we want it at the bottom? Do we want it at the top? Or do I want it on the inside? If I do it on the inside, could also use that extra piece of watercolor paper. I think I'm going to do that anyway. I'm going to put the watercolor paper on the inside too. I don't do a lot of decorating on the inside of my card. And I need to move the trimming a little bit up so that it doesn't show where the color came off. <laughs> you need a small trimmer. One thing's taken care of. Um, I actually have two of these. I love Fisker's trimmers. Okay, first off, this is one of the first ones that I've, I've had. I've gotten, I had a couple of others that were different types, but the guillotine has actually worked the best for me and has lasted the longest. Um, but what I did with my first one is I accidentally broke something. So this, the finger guard is actually clipped in, like right here, there's a little piece of plastic that's got like a little clip part. And I, ta I had taken it out like multiple times to be able to do bigger pieces of cardstock on it, right? Well, I accidentally broke that piece off. So I emailed Fiskers. It's like, can I get a replacement part? They asked me for my address and they sent me a new trimmer. No questions asked. I didn't even have to show them a picture. And that was when I learned how wonderful the, ooh, I do like that, how wonderful the, um, the warranties are for Fiskers stuff. There's a lot of different brands and stuff out there, but I don't know that any of them actually do that. You tossed your finger guards? I, I love using it, though. The thing is, I use it for specific reasons. I've got, if I want to use do some bigger cardstock, I've got a swing line that cost me probably like 25, 30 bucks maybe in another room so I can cut the bigger things like my watercolor paper. But I usually don't need it. This is all I need on my desk. So if I want to do 
So here's my thought. First off, I'm gonna need to trim this to make sure it fits right. But if I put this up at the top, or I could put it here. I'm debating. Yes, if you put too much paper in your guillotine, the paper is definitely gonna shift when, it's, when the blade is going down. The less amount of paper you've got, the better. Um, also, some of these, like this one, I think is self-sharpening, and that's because of the angle that the blade is at. So if you screw around with it too much, I know, the white, whites don't match. So I can't do that. I'll have to use it on a different card. But could put this on the inside. Just leave this as plain on the outside. What do you guys think? Or I could put that sentiment over part of my coloring do need to trim off that little bit of white there okay so that looks better so the front's done oh god <laughs> everybody wants it different Uh, I am going to make an attempt to do a fishtail because I really suck at that, which is why I don't do it very often. I do have dyes that will do it, and I have a bad habit of not taking them out, which is another reason why I need to get everything reorganized and know exactly what I've got and where I've got it. See, my fish shells always wind up wonky. It's like a little bit off. I never quite cut it right down the center. I try, but it's always just a tiny bit off. And sometimes I just cut too far in and yeah. But this is just an example of what you can use your dies for if, you, if you're not good at it. Or what you don't need your dies for if you're good at it, it really just depends. Again, we, you know, I believe you know different things are different tools, and I love all my tools. I think all of us did cards when we were kids. I am going to use a little bit of foam though. Um, all of us did cards when we were kids. There we go. That's the right size. I think this is my happy doodle which means it's too thick. I don't want to use that because it's too thick. I'm trying to use up some of my older stuff too. I came across a bunch of um, foam tape that I hadn't used from different companies. I'll go ahead and use this. I don't really like it, but this one is the Sizzix and it is very, very sticky, which is great. However, I have a really hard time getting the um, release paper off. It's a plastic release paper. I see 15, but yeah. Who hasn't said, who hasn't given me a thumbs up yet? If you're sitting here in the chat you know, or sitting here watching, you know you like the video, so. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love it when you guys do give me thumbs up on there. It's not so much that, uh, that it does anything to my ego, but it does let YouTube know and it does let YouTube know who else to, um, basically that to send this out to other folks. So I'm gonna cut this in half. And since I don't want to waste it, I'm just gonna cut a small piece off and it should be enough for the whole thing. There we go. So I'm gonna pop it up and I can either go up here at the top or I could go down here over the bottom but it will cover up part of their body. So again, I don't know why people wouldn't thumbs up. Hello, Leah. <laughs> welcome on in, honey. Welcome, welcome. Top. Yeah, that's kind of what I was leading towards, too. But yeah, this, I, every time that I've gotten any kind of, um, of foam tape that has got a plastic, maybe it's because the adhesive has to be so strong in order to, for the plastic to stick or something i always have the hardest time getting it to come off i mean even using my um gloria wolf pokey tool it still gives me a hard time yeah we don't want to cover up the baby feet 
By the way, has anybody heard from Elizabeth? I know that she was having issues with internet. Does she have her internet back yet? Burnish it, just don't don't just smooth it. Yeah, I think it's just that I've got this one roll. This is the roll that I got um, at Creativation in my Sizzix, uh, my little Sizzix goodie bag. I just really like some of my other tapes better. Okay, I was going to use my tweezers to put it down, but I'm going to try to do this straight. There we go. And not quite all the way to the edge. I want some of that blue to, light blue to show. There we go. Um, I love this. This turned out so cute. So I used some techniques that I don't do a whole lot. Um, did heat embossing. I used to do it a lot and then I kind of got away from it because of all the other stuff that I was doing, right? So, because it doesn't go with every single card. So I did, like if you're using hot foil, probably not going to do heat embossing at the same time because they're going to be competing with each other. So I did um, heat embossing and I did watercolor and I did a little bit of die cutting using something I haven't used in a while. So yeah, I think that turned out super, super <laughs> cute. And Jean says, that looks cute. You have my address. <laughs> Well, speaking of, I should be able to do a giveaway. Let me pull up that screen and then see if I can actually show it on my screen like I'm supposed to. Because I have not really played with my OBS in the last week. There's a lot of st other than getting the updates installed and making sure that it didn't kill my software. Right. Um, StreamYard. Giveaway. Okay, so give me just a sec. I'm going to try to get this pulled up right. I think it's on the screen share, but I don't know what screen is actually currently sharing. So, oh, it actually showed up right. Yay. It's not as big as I want. So I'll fix that. Let's go full screen on that thing. And... Okay, I don't have where I can add my face to this, but that is okay. So we're going to go ahead and pick tonight's live, which is on the 27th. And if you want, if you want to be added to the, if you want to be in for the giveaway for this cute, super cute card, let me show you that one more time. If you want to be in the giveaway for this super cute card that you guys just saw me make, be sure to go ahead and say something in the chat. Say hi. Linda says, I need to tutor you on this tech stuff. I need to record some stuff <laughs> to do that for lots of folks. I mean, I know that you guys are interested and I'd love to do that. It's just, I haven't, it's another one of those things. Um, part of my plans that I want to work on that I think I have promised and not delivered on yet is a hot foil Melissa says, duh, I want to win. A hot foil class, no, a hot foil course, like a big thing. So Christina wants to get on, on it too. Guess which troublemaker she is. <laughs> welcome on in, Christina. Welcome, welcome. And somebody else said something else. Who was that that said that? Popped in my, Tater, okay. We have another new person. Thank you for popping in. Welcome, welcome. Love the lurkers. Love, love, love the lurkers. But we love it more when you come and say hi because all my people in the chat, they're nuts. Yeah, anyhow, I am going to be picking names, but you know what? I wanted to give folks a chance to say hi. And Dawn is thinking, wait a minute. You're asking more people? That gives her less of a chance to win the card. <laughs> I know, I know that's what you were doing. Okay, let me go ahead and pull the giveaway tool up again. So we're out of time. We're going to go ahead and do that. And we've only got like about... You need to watch... I don't have mink videos. I do have a Cronova laminator. So I do have regular foil. And we were talking about that before that I, I thank you so much. Also, I posted in the in a couple of different places, including in the community tab on YouTube, ask me your questions. And one of the questions was, I think that was the one. 
anyway, I know that um, Heather had said something about the mink and that she had been working on that. So whenever I post something up like that, I'd love for you guys to go ahead and answer and let me know your thoughts because that gives me more ideas as to some things that you might want to see so I can add that on my list of things to do. And me, me saying I haven't had time to get this done or that done, it's not saying that I'm too busy. It's just I want more things on my list so I know what to do. T just ordered, yeah, yeah, Heather just ordered one for her birthday. That's fantastic. Yep. I don't have a mink. I need to put that on my list because it's supposed to work better than any laminator, but my laminator has worked great. I've only been using it for like, what, three years? And I don't use it that often. But any kind of any kind of laminating that I do and any kind of foil, toner foil, I do with that. My biggest problem with toner foil is my printer that I still have to figure out how to get it to do darker, although I've followed all the instructions, including watching videos from people that go into detail as to all the settings. And I've done that, and I think it's a problem with my printer or with my toner cartridge. Okay. So, D says, I'll do a live with you. So are you talking about doing a live with Heather or doing a live with me or both? That's an idea. Okay, let me go ahead and get this back up and I need to stop putting this off because we need to go and head over to Don's channel in just a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select comments. We have 16 people in the chat that are in the drawing. Okay, 16 folks. So let's see who is going to win it. Um, I did see your message, Dawn, that you were, I didn't see another one. Did you send me another one? You said that you're not setting up ahead. You're going to be doing a live after we get done. Is that right, Dawn? Or am I, am I remembering wrong? I mean, if you're not, it's totally fine. And we all know how it is with your hand. And I'm actually surprised that you're wanting to do anything after the sur surgery. Okay, to not brush, I need to go help pick the neck. Just pick your name. That's what Melissa says. Okay, we're going to go ahead and draw. We're drawing. Okay, let's see. And the winner is... Don, 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 Don gets the card. <laughs> Fabulous. I do need to add the drum roll thing again, you know? I haven't done that in a bit. I need to fix that. But yay, Don! Congratulations, honey. So I will be sending this out to you. Um, of course, pictures are going to go up first. So yeah, it's going to take a little bit. But yeah, I think this turned out super, super cute. And it wasn't really that hard. And I actually chatted the whole time that tells you how easy something is if i can be talking the whole time and not screw it up then you know that it's got to be easy okay so jim says that wasn't rigged it's not rigged i don't know how to rig stream yard i really don't <laughs> The giveaway, the, the, the giveaway tool on StreamYard, I, I have no way of, of rigging it. <laughs> I need to tap into Dawn's vibe better. Absolutely. Well, Dawn, we all love you, honey. And we are going to go ahead and head over to your channel as soon as I get done right here. Um, I don't. Let me check and see whether or not she has started her live. If she has started her live, then I'll be able to go ahead and set that up. If not... I will wait until she is ready to do her thing. And, and there's so many people on my thing right now that it's hard for me to find it. Mostly because Elizabeth has scheduled out a lot of stuff. So that is super awesome with her. Positive vibes. Yes, yes, yes. So doesn't look like it's there yet. There we go. 
she is going live and it's there so i am going to go ahead yep it shows that she is she just went live so that is fabulous so we are going to head over to dawn's channel if you haven't tried this part out yet i'll go ahead and explain it real quick um youtube has what's similar to twitch's raid feature and it is called redirect and at the end of the stream as soon as i hit end stream it's going to take you directly over into her stream now if you have it set on autoplay uh, your YouTube on autoplay, then it'll automatically set it up over there. If not, it should bring up a box in the middle of the screen um, saying that this is where you're being redirected to, and you can just click it to go over. So we're, we are going to go and hang out with Dawn for a bit, and you guys have a wonderful night. Again, thank you so much for hanging out with me and making this wonderful card with me. I'm going to have to make more. I'm sorry. This is too cute. It turned out awesome. You guys have a wonderful night, though, and I will see you tomorrow night right here for our Not Too Shabby Shop live stream. So that is at 7 p.m. Yeah, it's later than my normal. 7 p.m. tomorrow night right here or over on the Not Too Shabby Shop Facebook group. Um, I did send out an email, and there's also going to be a, an announcement about it in the community tab here on this channel tomorrow. So you guys have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you later. Bye, guys.